Hi everyone, I'm Kristen Kraft, Chief Revenue Officer at Tetra. And I'm super excited to be here today telling you about one of the biggest decisions we ever made as a business. We knew this was a decision that could make or break our company. It was our decision to move from a free trial into a freemium model. I'll share with you today the questions we considered when deciding whether to make this move, some of the factors we looked at and the risks we evaluated, and I'll even give you an early look at some of the data that we've seen since making this change. Let's jump in. First, I wanna define a term that I'm gonna be using a number of times during this presentation, and that term is experience. We use it so often in the tech space, especially in SaaS companies. The way I'm using it today, I'm referring to how it feels to engage with a product, a brand, and a team. This is every single touch point you have with a company, is the experience you give them. It's the content you write, it's your support chats, it's every call they have with someone on your sales team. The whole package is the experience you're giving them. Now, the reason this matters is because when it comes to happiness, scientists have long known that happiness actually comes from experiences rather than from stuff. When they look at how people anticipate buying something new versus having a new experience, people are far happier when they anticipate an experience. And the same holds true after they've acquired that thing or had that experience. They have more happiness from the experience than the thing. This is also true when it comes to excitement. People have more excitement from the experiences they're enjoying rather than the stuff that they're buying. The reason this matters is because so often we think about the product we're selling. But in reality, we don't sell products. We sell experiences. It's the experience that caused somebody to buy. It's the experience that causes them to feel excited. It's the experience that causes them to feel happiness. So rather than thinking merely about the product we're selling, we need to think about the whole package. We need to think about their experience engaging with our company and with our team. When you think about the brands that you know and love, so often it comes down to the experience that you have with them. Think about Disney. Every single thing about Disney comes down to an amazing experience. Recently, this past spring, I took my daughter to Disney World in Florida for the first time. And every single thing about the experience, from the moment when I booked the hotel, to when I called them with a question about the room, to even the shuttle that we took from the airport, it was an amazing experience. And let's all agree that taking an airport shuttle is rarely a great experience. But in this case, it was. And it was incredible because that experience was truly a differentiator. We live in a day and age where it's harder and harder to actually differentiate yourself in a meaningful way. And yet the winners, those who create brands that we love, they're doing it. They're differentiating on experience. The losers, on the other hand, those who don't recognize that experience is paramount to everything else, they build haters. I also had an experience going to Canopy Lake Park. This is sort of like Six Flags um, in the Northeast. And it's a terrible experience. The lines were long, the rides were broken, the people were rude. Even trying to wait in line to buy an overpriced pretzel was a pretty painful experience. I waited in line for about 20 minutes just to give them way more money than I should have for a pretzel. And then the person I bought it from was not very nice. And as we've all heard, and probably many of us know, those of us who have a bad experience are far more likely, three times as likely to share that net negative experience than we are to share a positive experience that we've had. Here I am sharing this bad experience with all of you. So not only are the losers when they don't recognize the importance of delivering a great experience, not only are those losers failing to retain a customer, I'm never gonna go back to Canopy Lake Park, but they're building a squad of haters that are going out and telling other people about those negative experiences. Think about Slack and HipChat. Here's a perfect example within the SaaS space. Slack, everything about Slack and the experience that people seem to have with it develops this rabid fan base. People love Slack. HipChat in the, meanwhile, in the meantime, no, not, not much fan base there at all. In fact, they end up having to give all of their customers over to Slack. So truly, experience is the differentiator. 
Increasingly, it is the only differentiator. It's becoming easier and easier to get capital, to have a great idea, and then use that capital to scale your idea and grow a team. People can wake up and just copy your idea tomorrow. What they can't copy is the experience that you're delivering to your customers. Experience is the differentiator. Now, the reason I bring this up and the way that it relates back to freemium is this. So often we think about freemium as a pricing strategy, as a way to get more people trying and looking at your product. Yes, that's true. Freemium does, of course, let you try the product. But more importantly, freemium lets you try the experience. It allows a customer or a prospect to gauge what it feels like to interact with not only the product, but also the team, the support folks, the sales team, everything about that company. So I want to change gears for a moment and get personal and tell you about our journey at Tetra. To give a little bit of context, Tetra is a wiki. It's an internal knowledge management system that teams use to share information with one another. This might be info like the Wi-Fi password. It might be standard operating procedures. It might be updates on the upcoming product release. Basically, we believe that if you're repeating yourself, you should have written it down the first time. And let's face it, all of us repeat ourselves. So anyway, Tetra, is a wiki that helps high performance teams move faster, onboard new people. For a long time, we had a pricing model that looked like this. We had a number of different plans, but the common factor here, as you can see, all of them have that big CTA in the bottom, start a free 15 day trial. For each of these plans, we offered a 15 day trial. Now, we knew this wasn't a great experience, we thought about potentially moving towards a freemium model. We know there were two directions we could go in, but we weren't sure. It seemed like a scary decision because there were some advantages to that 15 day trial. After all, in creating that sense of urgency, hopefully we were encouraging people to engage with the product and use it and then potentially buy within 15 days. On the other hand, as we considered steering the ship towards freemium, we thought of the better experience that we could deliver. We thought about the fact that we'd love to give people more time to get to know our product and see value from our product. After all, with something like a wiki, it takes a little bit of time to document some of your processes and then tap into that documentation and share it with others on your team. So here are the four questions that we needed to answer in evaluating whether we should change gears and move into a freemium model. And I wanna teach you how we thought about these four questions, because if you are evaluating a similar decision, you should probably ask yourself these questions as well. The first was whether we had attained product market fit. If we were about to open the floodgates to way more people, hopefully, we wanted to make sure that we had the right product to do the job. Second, we wanted to know whether this model would better align with what customers wanted and needed. Third, we wanted to figure out if we could handle the risks, because certainly there were a lot of risks. And then fourth, we needed to figure out what is the right trigger? What is the tipping point at which somebody is prompted to move from our free plan into a paid plan? So let's focus on these one by one. First, do we have product market fit? Well, we conducted a research project based on writing by Sean Ellis. Now, Sean Ellis posits that you should ask people whether they would feel disappointed if your product were to go away tomorrow. Would they feel very disappointed, somewhat disappointed, not really disappointed, they wouldn't care at all? Now we asked this question to a lot of Tetra users and found that 46% of users would feel very disappointed if they could no longer use Tetra. But what does this mean really? Is 46 good, is that bad? Well, according to Sean Ellis, 40% is a good benchmark. He's worked with tons of different startups and has found that for those companies that have a score of 40% or higher of customers reporting that they would feel very disappointed if they could no longer use a product, those companies tend to go on and succeed because they have found product market fit. So question one answered, we could feel pretty confident that we had good product market fit and we are ready to open the floodgates and have more people using our product within a freemium model. Question two, what do customers say? 
So we looked into the kind of feedback we were getting from customers in the support channel, via sales. Um, and so often, these are real quotes from customers, so often quotes like this came up or comments like this came up. I need more time to set things up and get buy-in. Buy-in is a pretty big factor when it comes to a product like a wiki or knowledge management base because you need a lot of people to trust it and contribute. You heard, this is something we really need, but can I have more time? The need was there, they just couldn't do it within 15 days. Or can I get another few weeks to trial? People didn't quite know how long they needed, but across the board, people were telling us that they needed more time. So question two answered. 15 days was simply not enough time to let people get to know the Tetra Wiki. Question three, can we handle the risks? So this was a scary one. We had heard from a lot of other SaaS companies that this could actually have a massive impact on our revenue growth. We might see revenue growth drop for three months, six months, maybe even a year. We also questioned whether it would take people forever to convert. Would people remain on the free plan forever? Would they game the system so that they would never bump into those limits? And last, what will happen with our existing customers? Were there a lot of customers who were below that threshold and they might churn and just go and be free plan users? And then question four, what's the right trigger? So again, we have a wiki product. Therefore, people are creating lots of different pages to document their processes. They're also inviting a lot of different users in. What's the right metric here? Is it about the number of pages? Is it about the number of people? Is it some other value metric entirely? We ultimately landed on the number of pages as the trigger to move somebody from a free plan into a paid plan. Therefore, the question arose, how many pages do people need in order to see value? We did a lot of research into this and realized that 20 pages was an important tipping point. 20 pages was a point at which it was clear that somebody was ready to lean into documentation on their team. But it was also a point where once they had gotten that invested in a Tetra product, they were usually pretty unwilling to walk away. So we decided that 20 pages was an important value metric um, and the right trigger to move somebody into a paid plan. Finally, we questioned, as I mentioned, how many people might downgrade. We evaluated how many existing customers were below that 20 page threshold, but paying us money. So having answered that question and feeling confident that you know, we had a good value metric, that we felt confident about the number of pages people would have for free before moving into a paid plan, and feeling confident that there weren't very many people who might risk downgrading, we decided to move ahead. We set our sights on freemium in August of 2018. Now, I tell you this month and year because I think it's important to know that not that much time has passed. It's only been about five months since we made this change. So the data I'm about to share is still pretty recent, but we think we're seeing some good bellwethers that are indicating what's working, what isn't working, and where we can teach you from what we've learned. So I'm about to share some data. We're gonna go under the hood um, of Tetra's business and take a look at how this impacted our business and our customers. So one of the first things, of course, we wanted to do in moving from this free trial um, into a freemium model was get more teams to sign up. Um, so if you are considering this move yourself, you might anticipate seeing data somewhat similar to ours. So this is a look at 2018 by quarter. And you'll re recall that this was August 2018, so it was around Q3 when we made this change. As you can see, we went from about 1,000 signups, a little bit more than that, um, to just shy of 2,000 signups. And this number has continued to grow for us into 2019. So, so far, so good. This seems to underscore the fact that indeed, we were offering people too little time. Though we want to create a sense of urgency with our 15-day trial, it simply wasn't enough time and people were perhaps feeling reluctant to even sign up in the first place, knowing that we are going to be ripping the product out of their hands at the end of that 15 day period. So indeed, moving to a freemium model did encourage even more people to sign up. It eliminated any anxiety that somebody might feel about losing access to the product after 15 days.
Lesson learned one here, people don't like investing in something that's going away. They're less likely to commit to it. Even those who did sign up arguably might have felt less likely to create new pages or add team members. We've actually seen that the rate of both of those things has increased since launching our freemium model. Another data point, will teams take forever to close? You may recall this was one of the risks that we were evaluating. Well, what we've seen is that indeed people are taking more than 15 days to close, but it wasn't as big of a risk as we thought it might have been. We were worried that it might take people six months, a year even to close, which would have been really tough on the business in the meantime. But in fact, as you can see, the vast majority of people are actually closing within about two months, even less than two months. So what you're looking at here on the x-axis is the number of days, um, the number of days that pass until somebody converts from a free plan into a paid plan. There on the y-axis, you're seeing the percentage of people who have converted by that point in time. So for example, 10 days in, about 25% of people have converted. Meanwhile, if you look at 50 days in, about 80% of people have converted. So the vast majority of people are still converting and yes, it's taking longer than 15 days, but it's not so much longer that we can't handle that increase in time to close. Lesson learned here is that we just needed to trust that with time, people would fall in love with the product and they would fall in love with the experience that we were able to give them. The next thing, of course, we want to know is how this would impact our support. Were we going to see our support costs and our support workload go through the roof? Could that make or break the company? Well, let me show you some of the data that we've seen from our support channel. Quarter over quarter, we've seen it go up, um, or sorry, not quarter over quarter, for Q1 through Q2, um, we had about 400 conversations per quarter. It started to rise in Q3 over what we had seen in Q2. And in Q4, indeed, support was much higher. So this was somewhat to be expected. We have more people engaging with the product. But again, like time to close, this is not an increase that was unsustainable or one that we couldn't handle. It increased, but not by that much. And I think there's a silver lining here as well, because all of those support conversations were an opportunity all those additional conversations that we had with people in Q4 were an additional chance to hear from customers, from prospects about what they liked from the product, what they didn't like. It was a chance to hear about their pain points and a chance to hear about how they articulated how our product worked and how it fit their needs. So our lesson learned here is yes, you definitely need to pre prepare for more support if moving from a free trial to a freemium model. But this is an opportunity. It's an opportunity to learn from your customers and it's an opportunity to create a great experience. Because remember, the experience that they have engaging with your support team is just as important, arguably in some cases more important than the, than the experience they have with your actual product. We wondered, of course, as well about that risk, whether moving to a freemium model would tank our MRR growth. So here's a snapshot of MRR growth in each quarter. And in Q3, our MRR growth definitely dropped. The new MRR we added in that quarter was far lower than we had seen in recent memory. But in Q4, we've seen that MRR growth back, MRR growth bounce back pretty quickly. And as we're now you know, a little bit into Q1 of 2019, we're actually seeing MRR growth stronger than ever. So our lesson learned here is that you do need to have the stomach for short-term stagnant revenue growth. Your freemium model probably will slow your new MRR for a while. And that's not for everybody. We were able to sustain that, that, that slow down, but others might not feel comfortable with that. So it's a really important factor to consider if you're thinking about moving from a free trial to a freemium model. If you're tight on cash or you have VCs breathing down your neck expecting really big MRR growth every month, this might not be the move for you. And that's okay. 
And last, upgrades. This is my favorite chart of all um, because I think that upgrade revenue is such an important bellwether. It's an important gauge of whether people are enjoying your product and whether they're seeing so much value from it that they're willing to show you value in return and spend more. So this is a look at our MRR growth, or sorry, our upgrade MRR uh, growth for each quarter. So as you can see, we are pretty um, standard in Q1 and Q2, pretty stable. Um, we saw a nice big bump in Q3 and then a huge jump in Q4. And again, in early Q1 2019, we're continue to, continuing to see this grow rapidly. So our lesson learned here is that by investing in creating a great experience, you are investing in stronger long-term relationships. So let's go back to the experience for a moment. I think all of this data is hopefully useful and hopefully can inform your business if you're considering making a, a move like this. But let's come back to the experience for a moment. At the end of the day, anybody can copy an idea. Anybody can copy a product. But what no one can copy is the experience that you have worked so hard to create. Nobody can copy the way that your team talks with people, interacts with people, supports them, works with them during the sales process. That experience is the differentiator that nobody can replicate. It's the only real way to differentiate. So I wanna change the game, change the way that we think about freemium. Because I believe that freemium isn't a pricing strategy. It isn't merely a way to get people to engage with your product. Freemium is an experience strategy. It's a way to give people a taste of the excellent experience that you're looking to build. If you'd like to talk more about this or you have data that might be helpful to us, I would love to hear it and I would love to share any other data or thoughts that or lessons learned that we've gleaned along the way. Please feel free to reach out to me. Twitter is probably the best way. My handle is at the crafty. And I'd also love to invite you to check out Tetra. Try signing up for a free plan, test it out, take it for a test drive. Let us know what you think. We would love to hear what you think, not only of the product, but of course, also the experience. And we will strive to give you the best possible experience we can. Thank you so much.